Ray tracing takes a huge hit to performance, we all know that, and I often argue in some of my lower end GPU comparisons that it's just not even worth considering. But what about a, what about a high end GPU like the RTX 3080? And the answer to the question of does it matter, should you use it, might depend on 1440p versus 4K, all of that. But just a second, sponsor today's video, please watch this one, I'm incredibly excited. I am so unbelievably excited that Brilliant reached out to me to sponsor this video, because as many of you know, I'm actually a high school math teacher. I have a master's degree in education, tons of experience teaching math, and the folks over at Brilliant actually understand how people learn STEM. Oh, wow, so many people don't get this. You have to learn interactively in a low pressure environment. Now, many of you might have figured out over, you know, Zoom call lectures that passively staring at a screen or a lecture is not the right way to learn, but interactively doing something uh, while you're learning, active engagement is everything. Brilliant understands that educational research backs it up. If you head over to brilliant.org slash Daniel Owen, click the link in my description, click the link in my pinned comment, then you can get 20% off if you're one of my first 200 subscribers to head over there, and that's on the annual premium membership. Everyone can learn STEM. Everyone can learn math. It's just a matter of how much time it takes, and you can learn at your own pace here, guys. This thing is phenomenal. I've checked out the comment content. It's great. I absolutely support it head on over. Let's get back to the rest of my video. All right, back to talking about ray tracing. So again, in this video, we're going to be looking at the RTX 3080. This is the 12 gigabyte model, not the 10 gigabyte model. So in addition to having the extra VRAM, that also performs a few percent better due to some increases to its memory uh, speeds, as well as a few more CUDA cores, all of that. It kind of falls in between a 3080 10 gigabyte and a 3080 Ti. Anyway, we're going to look at it at both 1440p and 4K. We're going to use DLSS on off, but also, you know, you can use DLSS even when you're not using ray tracing. So can we get a super high frame rate versus to just barely, barely playable frame rate? There's a lot of things to consider. I'll give you my thoughts as we run some side-by-side -side benchmarks to take a look at the, uh, you know, uh, the actual visual comparison between the two as well as the frame rates, not just bar graphs. And then I'll give you some more final thoughts at the end. Okay, so let's start the testing at 1440p where ray tracing will be easier to use than at 4K, and, and I think 1440p is still more popular than 4K, definitely, even on uh, 3080 class GPU. But here we're comparing the native 1440p image at ultra settings without RT versus the native 1440p image at ultra settings with RT ultra, meaning it's ultra settings plus the RT ultra preset. This does not include the psycho lighting. But what I, wanna, what, what I really want to highlight here is at native native 1440p with the ray tracing settings turned up pretty high, the 3080 really does not deliver what I would, I mean, maybe technically it's a playable frame rate, but not at all the kind of frame rate where I would want to play on this expensive and powerful of a graphics card. Whereas at the normal ultra settings, you know, that we're well above 60 FPS and it's a very smooth experience. So I really just don't think that at the native resolution and the RT Ultra settings, this makes any sense whatsoever to get the small visual benefit. So yeah, let's go ahead and try some other settings. So on the right hand side, I've decreased the ray tracing settings just to ultra plus the RT reflections, so without any of the shadows or, or lighting or anything like that. And we're much closer to 60 FPS, but you can see we still are below 60 FPS. But on the left hand side, I figured I would also make a small image quality compromise. What if we kept everything at ultra, but I used DLSS at its quality setting? So in other words, we took us a, a little bit off of the visual quality on both of our previous settings to improve frame rates, and here we go. This also gives us a chance to look at the native image versus the uh, DLSS quality image, with the only real difference between them being whether the reflections are on or off. DLSS quality looks pretty good at 1440p, but versus the native image, especially like the, the palm tree branches and stuff there, in a lot of spots, um, I can definitely tell that DLSS is not the native 1440p image, so it is certainly a trade-off, although a pretty minor one. 
Okay, so what if we use DLSS quality on both of them? Because I know many of you are just shouting at your screen, you can't use DLSS on the one and not the other. Okay, fine. But also, what if we don't play the game at ultra settings on the left-hand side? In other words, what I'm looking at here is without using ray tracing, if you'd actually just tweak the settings down a bit, like play it high and maybe DLSS quality if you feel like that looks pretty good to your eye, then you can be at an insanely high refresh rate experience in this game. Whereas it is true that using DLSS quality um, on your ray traced ultra settings can get you a pretty usable, playable experience. But I'm just showing that like, you know, you can tweak the settings and use DLSS if you're willing to use DLSS without using ray tracing. And it's the difference between hovering around that 60 FPS experience versus capping out, you know, a 120 hertz or more refresh rate monitor and being ultra smooth. Now it's gonna be your personal preference and probably the type of game that determines which of those options makes the most sense for you. Cause we can see 142 FPS versus what was that 66, something like that. Now let's jump up to 4K and see if we feel like you know, is, is ray tracing usable here at all? On the left hand side, we just have the high settings at 4K native, and you can see that even there we can't really hit 60 FPS, at least not in difficult scenes like this. And on the right hand side, we have the ray tracing ultra settings at 4K, and I already kicked in DLSS, or else it was an utter slideshow. Not even near 30 FPS, we were getting down into the teens, so I wasn't even gonna bother taking a look at that. But with DLSS at quality, it's still only barely over 30 FPS and not at all the kind of experience that I would want to play pretty much any game at, but definitely not a first person game like this one. Although while I'm just using Cyberpunk for this video as kind of a stand in for, you know, performance. So obviously there are some other game types where maybe 30 FPS could be more acceptable. But again, on this level of hardware, no, <laughs> not really in my opinion. Now DLSS quality does look quite good at 4K. But yeah, 52 FPS versus 34, hmm. Well anyway, it looks like on the left hand side we do still need some DLSS at 4K if we're gonna even be at the high settings. Whereas I was thinking, how far do I have to push DLSS at 4K to try to get playable frame rates? And I went all the way down to the performance setting. I'm fairly certain that's like a 1080p upscale to 4K, if I'm remembering my percentages correctly for DLSS, which, you know, Guys, if you're on a 4K, if you're on a 1080p screen right now, you're probably like, DLSS looks fantastic there. And honestly, it's impressive how well it does upscale, but on my actual native 4K screen, and it's a pretty big one, I can absolutely see a major loss of detail and more aliasing. And a smooth moving benchmark like this makes DLSS look a lot better than it does in more quick motion, where a lot of the aliasing kind of breaks apart on that temporal upscale that it's using. So, you know, there it is. Although I would say it still didn't even get it to frame rates that I would consider uh, ones that I would want to play the game at. So. Uh, let's try to adjust things a little bit. So on this side now we have ray tracing on both sides, but I'm trying to get closer to 60 FPS using different methods. So uh, one th what I'm really testing out though is, can you turn down normal graphic settings and impact the performance or do you just get bottlenecked by the ray tracing? So what we're really looking at here is the high preset rather than the ultra preset on the left hand versus the right hand side, right? But other than that, it's just ray trace reflections turned on to the preset with DLSS quality. And you can see that going down to high from ultra gained a few FPS, but nothing like the difference when you're not using ray tracing going down from ultra to high. So I guess my conclusion here would be that it's looking like it's loading the ray tracing cores and that's so much the limiting factor of the performance that tweaking other settings down, well, it could gain you a couple of FPS just really isn't the way to try to bump your performance up, I think you really do need to change the actual ray tracing settings. And it looked like just going down to reflections still didn't really get us where we wanted to be. So now on the right hand side, I'm going back to trying out the Ultra uh, RT Ultra preset 
but this time just going to the ultra performance mode on DLSS, and here it's really not looking great to my eye. Again, it's impressive for what it is, um, given the low resolution that it's upscaling to. It, it is pretty impressive, but it's just, I can definitely see breakup in the image. I wouldn't want to use DLSS that aggressively um, as my personal preference, but maybe some people are, are less sensitive to the, uh, you know, resolution and aliasing breakups uh, that I can definitely see here on my 4K monitor. Again, YouTube compression probably uh, diminishes some of the differences um, when you're looking at it, but Anyway, on the left-hand side, we can see that the high settings at 4K with DLSS quality are delivering very good 4K experience. So I've got to say here that at 4K in this game, I think the left-hand side is the settings that I would choose for a good balance of visual quality and performance, whereas the right-hand side to kind of match it ugh, was a lot. All right, guys, so my first thought is regarding 4K, which is where I actually play, but I understand that more people are still at 1440p. At 4K, I just don't think the 3080 is there in terms of delivering ray tracing performance without having to absolutely destroy the image quality using ultra performance DLSS or something along those lines. Or maybe in some games with lighter ray tracing loads, you can use a few ray tracing effects and it might not be too bad. But at 4K, I really just don't think it's a selling point, which probably influences why I personally, even though I have the 3080, don't care all that much about ray tracing, but I am super excited to see what the next generations of graphics cards can do. Hopefully AMD, uh, you know, takes a big step up. I'm also hoping Nvidia takes another big step up there. Now the 1440p results, I think are a lot more personal preference because you know, you can get to settings that I think are pretty reasonable in terms of the frame rate that you're able to play at and have some ray tracing effects on, but as we saw, if you're actually willing to tweak the settings down a bit to optimize them, and then maybe even still use a little bit of DLSS at the quality setting, I wouldn't go below that at 1440p, at least myself, on this kind of 3080 class of card, um, you can get some incredibly high refresh rate gaming experience. And now whether you are the kind of person that would value gaming at over 100 FPS versus getting around 60, but with all of the eye candy turned on, I think is a personal preference decision. It's not a right or wrong answer. Although I'm sure some of you in the comment section feel like there is only one right answer to this question and you're gonna argue about it. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, when we get down to below the 3080 class uh, of GPU, well, you know, that's a test for another video. And I honestly don't know if I'm publishing this video before or after I test out my other GPUs. Um, I am planning at looking at this uh, on other cards as well, because I think as you get below the high-end GPUs, it starts to become harder to recommend using ray tracing because you have to struggle even harder to get to the kinds of frame rates that you want. Although if you are playing at lower resolution, solutions, that helps as well. Uh, why did I not test 1080p on the 3080? Well, because quite frankly, I think it's a 1440p and up GPU as far as, as far as its target demographic, although I understand that some people would use a high-end GPU on a 1080p screen if they're playing at 240 hertz, 300 hertz, that kind of thing. But those kinds of setups are usually geared towards eSports, where you're turning settings down, not adding in ray tracing. So I didn't feel the need to focus on that in this particular video. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and don't forget you can subscribe to Brilliant, because that is an awesome idea and a fantastic way to learn STEM, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.